Welcome to another episode of Off Season Review, a segment in Study Hall with Steven Alves. This time we're going to look forward towards the Sacramento Kings upcoming season and what they did this past summer to bolster their young team they had last season. They're looking to be a really good team in the Pacific Division and the Western Conference's upcoming year. I'm excited to see what the Kings have in store for all of us. When examining the Sacramento Kings last season, there were some noticeable strengths and weaknesses. When we look at the strengths, they were really good at playing with pace, and that really stemmed from three things. Their ability to shoot the ball from deep, which they were fourth in the league at doing. Their ability to make shots, which they were also fourth in the league at doing, making slightly over 43 shots per game. And their ability to take care of the ball. They were seventh in the league at turnovers, turning the ball over only slightly over 13 turnovers per game. Weakness, it was definitely defense for sure. And in defensive efficiency, they were 21st in the league in terms of defensive rating. And that really stemmed from a lot of things, right? Allowing second chance points, 26 in the league. Protecting the paint, 26 in the league. Stopping the fast break, 21st in the league. And these are all statistical numbers that really showed, um, you know, it's not subjective, right? And... In terms of rebounding, they also had issues. 24th in the league in rebounding percentage and 26th in defensive rebounding percentage. They had trouble closing out defensive possessions by securing the rebound, and it was really noticeable. Also, another weakness they had was making free throws. They were 27th in the NBA at free throw percentage, shooting only 72.6%. Now, with all of those weaknesses and everything that we just stated, they still had the best season they've had since 2005-2006, and they had promising youth, and that was really the storyline for last season that's going to be the storyline moving forward. The record was 39-43, and and they were really close to making the playoffs. And to be honest, this year, I wouldn't be surprised if they made the playoffs and if they were able to maybe make some noise in the first round or if not go further. They have a lot of pieces coming back last year that really matured and really showed you know that they're ready to take that next step i think between some guys that we'll get into in the next couple slides with De'Aaron fox and marvin bagley and buddy healed that there's a bright future in sacramento and a, a lot of their issues last year was youth right defense in the nba takes a lot of understanding from experience and you can see that's not what those guys had but going forward and adding more games onto their belt Adding more trials and tribulations, I think it's really going to help the Sacramento Kings. So when we look at the roster for next year for the Sacramento Kings, they have a lot of people coming back, which is great. They have 68% of their minutes from last year returning next season, which is sixth in the league. And that's huge for a free agency, but saw 40% of the NBA become free agents. So when we look at guards and forwards and centers, right, we have De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Hill, Bogdan Bogdanovich, all have been integral parts to the Kings' future. Um, they've grown with the Kings. They, they've, you know, improved. And De'Aaron Fox was top three in the most improved race this past season. And really the sky's the limit for him as a player and as a leader. Buddy Hield really improved his, efficient, his efficiency last season. He became one of the best and most underrated shooters in the NBA. And Bogdanovich just does what you ask him to do. There was a point in time over the past couple of years where I believed he was the best player on the Kings roster. And he was still coming off the bench for them. And, you know, he's, he's a team guy. He wants to see the team win. He wants to make his team better. And you can't really ask enough of guys like that. Harrison Barnes just signed a $90 million contract with the Sacramento Kings, and they're looking at him being a former NBA champion as someone that can really provide some leadership and give them the pedigree that they're looking to move forward with in the future. Harry Giles and Marvin Bagley III really were two guys that really improved with the Kings last season. Um, two rookies that really were able to find their way in the latter half of last season. First half was a little bit bumpy, but Harry Giles eventually improved, and Marvin Bagley III was really dangerous as a player over the last couple months of the season. He might be their most talented and 
of the best big man they has is DeMarcus Cousins, honestly. And moving forward, the potential, just like Aaron Fox or Marvin Bagley, is the sky. There isn't anything that I don't see him not being able to do if he continues with the work ethic that he's shown he has. And he might be their best big they've had in terms of future projections, in my opinion, since they've had Chris Webber. So it'll be interesting to see what they're going to be able to do moving forward with him and De'Aaron Fox and see if they can recreate some of the success they've had in the early 2000s. So let's take a look at these new guys. Let's take a look at the guards first. Corey Joseph, former NBA champion with the San Antonio Spurs, coming in to make an impact next season. He was with the Indiana Pacers last year and really proved to be valuable and efficient for Indiana. He's looking to bring that same attribute here coming off the bench for the Sacramento Kings. Justin James is a rookie coming from Wyoming. Trevor Reza, another former NBA champion except with the Lakers. He's coming from the Washington Wizards, looking to make an impact in that aspect in terms of his leadership and his ability to shoot the ball. Tyler Lydon played a lot of minutes last year in the NBA G League. He played for the Capital City Go-Go and he's coming from the Denver Nuggets. Centers, Dwayne Dedman, coming from the Atlanta Hawks, one of the most improved players we've seen over the past couple years. He's really shown aspects to his game that we really didn't expect. He's become a tremendous shooter, he's become an above average rim protector and rebounder, and he's going to do a lot for the Kings next season from day one. Rashawn Holmes also is really improved, he's been a workhorse. Offensively, he's been amazing, and his ability to rebound has really stepped up over the past couple years. They really got him at a really good value, only paying him 4.8 million next season. And it's going to be really interesting with all these new guys. So let's take a look into what all of them are going to be able to do next season for the Kings and how they're going to be able to help to build a winning culture going forward. So now let's take a second to discuss how Corey Joseph is going to help out the Sacramento Kings next season. He's a point guard and his specialties include controlling the pace and defense. He's coming from the Indiana Pacers and he signed a three-year, $37 million contract. And as previously stated, he's a former NBA champion with the San Antonio Spurs. It's going to be really interesting to see how he fits because offensively, he's really good at controlling the pace and the Kings are always looking to push the ball and play fast. So in my opinion, he might be one of, if not the best signings that they had this offseason. And I'm excited to see him and see what he can do in Sacramento. Corey Joseph is a smart player. He's cerebral. He knows how to make the right plays. And he's learned under Greg Popovich, so he knows how to play the game the right way. He knows how to get in the paint and score. He can score from outside, but he's really good at finding his teammates. One of his most underrated aspects is he can read the defense extremely well but also know where his people are going to be. So he knows how to make the right play every single time down the court. And that's going to be huge for them, right? Because it's you don't have somebody like that that can come off your bench. You're going to be able to find that often. And next season with De'Aaron Fox starting, Joseph's going to have to be that guy to keep the pace going in the second unit. Shooting-wise, he's a very capable shooter. He shot 32% from three last season, which is a huge jump from where he started in the league shooting only like 20% from three. So he's gotten better for sure. And he's just going to continue getting better. This is where he's most dangerous. In transition, he is an absolute monster as a guard. He can finish well around the rim, but what he's also really good at is finding teammates. He had an assist to turnover ratio in transition of 7.8 last season which is really astonishing, right? So for every 7.8 assists, he had one turnover, which is a lot. So that's going to really help next year for Sacramento because what they always want to do is play fast. And having a player like Joseph and come off the bench and take up that spot for De'Aaron Fox while he's on the bench is going to be huge for them. Defensively, Corey Joseph also was a monster. He was in the 97th percentile of defensive efficiency for players last season. He gets stops, and he's able to do it by using his toughness, being quick, 
and really being a pest on defense. He doesn't give up on any plays, and he makes sure that he imposes himself on the offensive player every single time down the court. For Sacramento, having the defensive issues they had last season, having a player that's going to be the head of the snake like this is able to come in off the bench and really set a tone to impact the other guys on the floor is going to be huge. And I think this might have been one of, if not their best pickup of the summer. So if Corey Joseph wasn't the best pickup of the summer for the Kings, then Dwayne Dedman for sure was. Dwayne Dedman is coming from the Atlanta Hawks. He's a center. He can do everything. He's a good pick and roll roller. He's a really good shooter now. And defensively, he's able to really do a lot of things versatility wise. He signed a three year, $40 million contract for the Sacramento Kings and the last year of his deal worth a bit over 13 million isn't guaranteed. So if the Kings don't like what they're seeing from Deadman in that last year, then they can cut him and they can save the $13 million. So that to me is hugely underrated because you know you pick up so many of these guys based off potential and what they can do that you don't really know for sure what they're going to do for you. So being able to get a player of Deadman's growth and what we've seen from him in terms of progression as a basketball player is huge because not only if he doesn't perform the way you want him to, you can let him go. But if he does perform, you have him under contract for three years for only 13 million, which in the NBA really isn't a lot. So I'm expecting him to come in, make a big impact from day one on both ends of the floor. And he's gonna play a lot of minutes for the Kings. And he really plays the way how they're going to want to play, especially under new head coach Luke Walton. And I'm excited to see him play in Sacramento as well. So pay attention here to how he gets the rebound and then how quickly he goes down the court. Look at him sitting there out running about three different players just to get positioning. When we talk about the Kings, we're talking about a team that wants to play up-tempo speed the entire game and having someone like Deadman that can run the floor like that efficiently is really going to be an asset. He's a good screener. He's a really good finisher and he's a good slipper off those screens. So he likes to find ways to get to the basket and having a guard that can read those situations, come off quick off the screen and find him will be huge just like Trey Young was able to do and like Darren Fox is going to be able to do next season. So something that's really underrated of Deadman is his shooting ability. Last year he shot about 38% from three, which was amazing for someone of his size and his ability. And I mean, really, even for just any player in the league, 38% is huge. And he did it off of 3.4 attempts per game, so he was getting shots up. And the ability to space the floor like that will do nothing but give Deer and Fox a good open lane going towards the basket. And that's something that he hasn't had because Willie Collie's time wasn't able to shoot threes like that. So defensively, as you can see there, with him blocking D'Angelo Russell, Dwayne Dedman is really good. And part of it is because of his footwork. He's able to get on smaller guards and really stay attached to them just like he's able to do with big men and with wings. And having someone that can switch on defense like that, especially when you have a guard of De'Aaron Fox's size, about 6'4", that can switch with probably most fours in the NBA now, is going to be an asset in terms of defensive versatility, which is something they really struggled with last year. Willie Cauley-Stein wasn't a good defender, but now they have someone in the paint that can anchor their defense, and he's really looking to make a difference. Rashawn Holmes is another big pickup that's looking to make an immediate impact in Sacramento next season. He's coming from the Phoenix Suns, and like Dwayne Dedman, he's another center. He's really good at the pick and roll game, and he's improved on that a lot, especially last season in Sacramento. What he's really underrated doing is being a cutter. He's good at finding space in the defense for easy catches and easy scoring opportunities. And next year, especially with Deer and Fox and other players from the Sacramento offense that are able to be really versatile and do a lot of things, the players will be forgotten about. And if you forget about Rashawn Holmes, he's going to find a way to get himself open and get easy baskets. He signed a two-year, $9.7 million contract with the Kings this past offseason. And really, for his progression he's shown and his value, he was a really underrated pickup. 
So what Rashawn Holmes really worked on a lot last year was his ability to be efficient as a pick and roll roller. He's really good at finishing hard at the rim, but what impresses me is his ability after the screen to find different ways to get himself open. He's good at slipping screens, he knows where to read the space and the defense in terms of how he needs to go towards the basket. And when he gets there, it's all strength. He's very strong and he knows how to finish in traffic and finish hard. Something that he really worked on also that was underrated was after screen and rolls, his ability to finish mid-range. So he doesn't have to just finish for right dunks. He can also finish a little bit away from the basket, not too far but he has a reliable jump hook that lets him get some good space, like you can see right there, and finish efficiently. Something else that he really is good at is reading space and cutting without the basketball. So you can see right there, he's able to find angles. And what I alluded to before was with the offensive weapons Sacramento will have next season between De'Aaron Fox, Bogdanovich, Buddy Hill's progression, Everybody is going to be covered by multiple people. So when you have a player like Rashawn Holmes that's able to move without the basketball as a big, when the defense rotates, they're going to be leaving him alone. And so when you leave Rashawn Holmes alone, he's good at finding open pockets to where he's able to score efficiently without needing a play man for him. And for Sacramento next year, that's going to be easy points and they're going to be able to really rack some stuff up with him on the floor. Next on the list is Trevor Ariza. He's a small forward coming from the Washington Wizards and what he brings to the table for the Sacramento Kings are shooting and leadership. He signed a two-year $25 million contract and he's a former NBA champion with the Los Angeles Lakers in 2009. They want to continue building that championship pedigree in their young players, bringing in Corey Joseph and now bringing in Trevor Reza. And what they're going to really be able to bring to the table in terms of showing those young guys how to develop and what it takes in terms of effort and work ethic in order to win an NBA championship is really more invaluable than anything else. Reza used to be known as a good defender, but really he's fallen off tremendously in that aspect. And shooting is what he's going to bring most to the court in terms of his actual contribution that's not mental, which would be leadership. Trevor Reese's bread and butter comes from knocking down shots behind the three-point line. It's where he's most dangerous, and aside from his leadership qualities, it's why the Sacramento Kings got him. He's going to be able to spread the floor more for De'Aaron Fox, and it's going to really help out the Kings a lot, because he's going to leave the lane wide open in addition to the other shooters that the Kings have, and it's going to make the game easier for everybody. What he also really improved at last season was his ability to take the ball and take his defender off the dribble when they close out because they think he's going to be shooting a three. His ability to get to the rim and read the defense because the defender thinks he's going to shoot every time will really help out in terms of getting himself easy baskets on three-point shots. Defensively, Ariza was terrible last season. He was in the bottom 10 percentile in terms of getting stops. And when you look at this upcoming season, he's going to need to be better on that end. And he's shown, he's shown flashes, as you can see here. He used to be an elite perimeter defender, but he's dropped off from that. So I want to see if these flashes that he's shown last season are going to be able to translate over to next year, and he's going to be able to do better. Justin James is the only rookie on the roster next year with a full NBA contract and not a two-way contract. He's a shooting guard. He's 6'7". He has really good size. And his specialties include drawing fouls and moving without the ball. He has a really keen ability to get to the free throw line. That's going to help out a lot next season for the Sacramento Kings when he's able to get on the floor. He's coming from Wyoming, which is where he played his college basketball, and he signed a three-year, $4.2 million contract. When I say Justin James can get to the line, I mean Justin James can get to the line. He has a really keen ability at being able to throw his body into the defender and draw contact, and just like James Harden, I know a lot of people are going to argue this, 
it actually is contact because he's able to create it. He's able to keep his defender guessing on where he's going to go, which makes him foul him almost every time. And that's really going to help out next season if he plays. As last year, per 36 minutes, he attempted 7.9 free throw attempts per 36 minutes. 7.9. That's almost 8 free throws per 36 minutes. That's crazy. So what he's really good at doing, aside from drawing fouls, is moving without the basketball. He has good hands and good size at six foot seven, and he's able to catch lobs, but he's also able to read the defense and know when it's appropriate to cut, where to cut, and how to catch the ball for easy layups and dunks. Being able to move without the basketball is really an underrated talent in the NBA, and it helps so many players see the floor because it's something not everybody can do. So last but certainly not least on the list is Tyler Lydon. Tyler Lydon is a power forward coming from the Denver Nuggets. He signed a two-year, $3.3 million contract, and he's a shooter. He's a strip shooter. His efficiency and everything he's going to do, for the most part, are going to come from behind the three-point line. He's had some trouble finding consistent minutes and being able to play in the NBA. Last season, he spent most of the year with the Capital City Go-Go over in Washington, D.C., but in terms of NBA minutes last season, he only played about four minutes a game in 25 games. So he's really looking for a fresh start, a place where he can really impact the game and contribute and see the floor as how he can grow. And he thinks the Sacramento Kings are a great opportunity for that, and obviously the Kings do as well since they signed him. And it's going to be interesting to see what he's going to be able to do for them next year. Lydon's a shooter. That's what he does. He gets shots up from behind the three-point line, and that's what he's looking to do every single time down the court. Next season, if he's able to play for the Sacramento Kings, just like we talked about with Trevor Ariza, it's going to be huge for them. right? You can use as many floor spacers as you can get because you want De'Aaron Fox to have that open lane. And this is a good test project for them, I guess I would say. Because if he doesn't work out, uh, oh well, it's only $3.3 million for two years. And if he does work out, then you have a great shooter on your roster for super cheap. So when I examine the Sacramento Kings offseason, the grade I have to give them is a B. And this is why I give them a B. I feel like they had some really underrated pickups that definitely will help out next season. When you talk about putting Corey Joseph into a mix, one of the elite perimeter defenders as a point guard last season but then you throw in his ability to control the pace of the game which is something the Kings were amazing at last season third in the league and really playing at how they wanted to play he really is a perfect fit for them coming off the bench being able to anchor that second unit will be huge and I wouldn't be surprised if we see Corey Joseph and we talk about him next season as a six man of the year candidate and then you talk about Dwayne Dedman, right? If Corey Joseph, like I said earlier, wasn't the best pickup for them, Dwayne Dedman definitely was. Dwayne Dedman has really improved as a player. He's really matured, and he does a lot. He's really good in the pick and roll. He's really improved his three-point shooting, shooting over 38% from the three-point line. Defensively, he has footwork good enough to let him keep up with players on the perimeter, so you can switch with him. He makes you a lot more versatile. And I think he's going to play a lot of minutes for the next year. I wouldn't be surprised if he's starting from day one. And he's going to do wonders for Sacramento. So another thing I definitely want to mention, I think really helped out and was smart by Vladi Divac in the front office, was bringing in Corey Joseph and Trevor Ariza. While Ariza isn't the player that he used to be, the two of them both have championship pedigree and experience. Ariza won a championship under Phil Jackson. Corey Joseph won one under Greg Popovich. Those are arguably two of the best, if not the best, coaches to ever coach in the NBA. And being able to learn from those guys and bring what they're able to learn to the table to these young guys in Sacramento will really help out a lot. And I think Vladi Divac and the front office are really planning on that. And I think it's going to work out well. 
it seems to me like the Aaron Fox and Buddy Hield and Bogdanovich and Marvin Bagley are all willing to learn. And that's really all you can ask for from young guys of that caliber is are they willing to learn? And do they know what it takes, the effort it takes to become an NBA champion? And that's something that Trevor Reese and Corey Joseph definitely can shed light on because they've been there and they've done that. So as to why I gave them a B instead of giving them an A, I feel like the Kings could have done more defensively to fill some of those gaps that they had last season. They were 21st in the league in defensive efficiency. They were 26th in the league in opponents' points in the paint. 26th in the league in second chance points by the opponents. 26th in the league in defensive rebounding. And they were 21st in the league when it came to defending the fast break. Definitely didn't end well for the Kings last season defensively. And bringing in guys like Corey Joseph and Dwayne Devin definitely will help next season immediately. But I feel like for a free agency period, which was the largest we've ever seen in the NBA, with 40% of the league being free agents, I felt like they could have done more on that end. And these guys will definitely help out next season, but I feel like getting more guys depth-wise that can defend at a high level and really set an example from a work ethic standpoint for those young guys would have been huge. Corey Joseph is one of those guys that I'm talking about, but bringing in more guys like that definitely helps to fix the culture and set the just set the path, set the set the tone for what you want those guys like Aaron Fox, like Buddy Hill, like Bogdanovich, like Marvin Bagley to think and what you want their mindset to be like going forward in their careers. And that's really the mindset that a champion is going to have to have in the NBA. You have to work for everything because nothing's going to be given to you. And hopefully the additions that they put this season will be able to help them learn that. But I think they could have done more with getting more guys that could teach these guys that. Thanks for tuning in to Study Hall with Steven Alves in this segment where we covered the Sacramento Kings upcoming season. The Kings definitely had the best year they've had in almost 15 years last season. So it's going to be interesting to see the next step that they take and if they're able to finally make that push to make it back to the playoffs. I look forward to covering the rest of the teams and still have a couple more left to do in the Pacific Division. So please make sure you keep your eyes out. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you guys' thoughts are on this. And if you guys have any more teams you want to see moving forward specifically, I'm going to try to cover all of them if I can. And I look forward to doing the rest of these. Thanks.